This is lecture 26 of physics 210A. Thermal physics and this lecture onwards what I am going to do is discuss a few specific problems that show how, how thermodynamics is used or some specific systems where you know thermodynamics shows you different kind of phenomena or the systems show different kind of phenomena which are important from the point of view of thermal physics or thermodynamics. So as far as formal development is concerned, I have done pretty much uh, what I wanted to do in that. So from now on, I am going to do some specific topics problems in connection with thermodynamics. And today's lecture is going to be on Vance Insights into the problem of black body radiation using thermodynamics. And this shows you the power of thermodynamics. We actually came very close to solving the problem. Just to give you a background, at the end of 19th century, a key problem in physics was the explanation. black body radiation spectrum. So let me explain what it means. So what we will need in this is u lambda at temperature T d lambda is the energy density in the range lambda to lambda plus d lambda. It is also written as u nu t d nu. And of course, both are related is the energy density. This is energy of the radiation inside a black body in the range nu to nu plus d nu where nu is the frequency and lambda is the wavelength. So before we go further, let me give you a question. How are u lambda t and u nu t related? Keep in mind that the energy is u lambda t d lambda, u nu t d nu. That is the total energy. This is this is the, the energy density. Now, what was found is that if you plot u 
lambda t with respect to lambda, it had some sort of a behavior and as temperature increased, the maximum shifted to the left. So, this is increasing temperature. So, as a short lambda it is small and then as you go to large lambda it is small and has a peak in between. Equipartition theorem does not work here. So, how to explain this? That was the that was the puzzle that was troubling physicists. And as you well know, the proper explanation led to quantum hypotheses by Planck. So, proper explanation of this u lambda t curve gave birth to, to quantum hypotheses. And then of course, the rest of the, his history. So, before that there was a lot of work done and a person who came very close to explaining this and in fact, one of the laws you know is uh, Wien's displacement law, which is correct for this and he also gave a distribution curve, which is very close to the experimental curve, except when uh, you know the, the frequency and temperature are related in a certain way, which I will comment upon later. So, the first meaningful attempt was by Wien. So, at the end of 19th century, first meaningful attempt which according to the Nobel Committee solved a big part of the problem was made by Wien. He gave the displacement law and also a distribution curve. He gave the displacement law and a distribution curve for u lambda t, which was very close to the experimental curve. And all this was done purely on the basis of thermodynamics. Remember thermodynamics does not worry about the details. It looks at the bigger picture. So, whatever results, exact results he got, everything, every law had to conform to that. So, since thermodynamics does not concern itself with microscopic details, the results are rigorous except for details. So, this is the power of thermodynamics and I want to share it with you in this lecture. It is it's very, very exciting how far Wien could go with his arguments.
So let's look at this curve, distribution curve once more, u lambda t. I don't claim it to be exact, but this is how it looks. The maximum is shifting towards short lambda, this is lambda as temperature goes higher and higher. So, to explain this and to get this form of curve, what one does or what we did was consider a spherical black body cavity. So, what one is considering is a black body cavity which is spherical in shape and it is isolated. Inside, all sorts of radiation is going around and it is at temperature T. Now, you may say that if you are doing a spherical shape, your results may not be exact, but one thing we know is that nature of black body radiation does not depend on the shape of the cavity. It depends only on the temperature, it does not depend on anything else. This we have talked about earlier. So, whatever shape I do take, it is ok and a spherical shape is easy to work with. So, no generality is lost if the cavity is taken to be spherical. And in fact, what happens is it makes life easy. In that I can perform my calculations in much more with much more ease. So, what one would do is now let this spherical cavity expand adiabatically. That means no heat leaving the cavity in a reversible manner. If that happens, this implies some work will be done by the cavity. or more precise by radiation in the cavity. And this in turn implies the internal energy U will decrease and this in turn implies T will decrease. So, as this cavity expands, its temperature goes down. Let us see how this temperature is related to the radius of the cavity. So, now we find relation between T and R. What is R? Radius of the cavity. So, look at this cavity. It has 
energy density u total energy capital u equals u times v and pressure p which is u by 3 let the initial radius be r so as r changes from r to r plus delta r then the work done by radiation is p delta v which is u by 3 delta v which is u by 3 times 4 pi r square delta r and this should equal decrease in u so now u is equal to the energy density which is a temperature dependent quantity and the volume v and therefore delta u is equal to delta u v plus u delta v this I can write as because we already argued that since internal energy is going down that means temperature has gone down so I can write this as du dt v delta t plus u times 4 pi r square delta r So, if you take the signs properly, we know that delta u is going to be equal to minus p delta v, there is no heat. So, I have du dt times v times delta t plus u times 4 pi r square delta r is equal to minus u by 3 4 pi r square delta r. And this gives du by dt delta t times 4 pi by 3 r cubed is equal to minus 4 by 3 u 4 pi r square delta r. Now, I can cancel terms this 4 pi by 3 cancels with this 4 pi by 3. So, I get du dt delta t as 4 pi by 3 is out is equal to minus 4 u delta r and there was a r square here and r cubed here. Now, u I know is equal to some constant, let us write that constant as sigma 
not necessarily Stefan Boltzmann constant, but sigma t raised to 4. Then I have on the left hand side 4 sigma t cubed r cubed delta t is equal to minus 4 sigma t raised to 4 r square delta r. Again, I can cancel this r cube and this becomes r. This t cubed and t raised to 4 becomes t. 4 cancels. So does sigma. And I end up getting r delta t is equal to minus t delta r. And in the limit of delta t and delta r tending to 0, I get dt over t equals minus dr over r. And this gives you d t over t plus dr over r is equal to 0. I can write this as d log t plus d log r is equal to 0, d log r t is equal to 0, and this means r t is a constant. And this means the temperature is proportional to 1 over r. As the cavity expands, the temperature goes down as 1 over r. And now we calculate change in lambda as a function of r and relate lambda and t. Now, this gives you Wien's displacement law. The question is, why should lambda change as the cavity expands. The reason is Doppler shift. As this cavity expands, suppose there is a particular lambda ray coming in, it gets reflected. And since the cavity is moving out with some speed, call it v, there will be, the, the cavity will see a smaller frequency because it's moving away in the direction of incoming wave and then it gets reflected. Again, there will be a shift in the frequency and you can write by Doppler shift formula, v is very small v is much, much, much less than c, the speed of light. Therefore, you can write that the incoming frequency nu minus outgoing frequency nu prime is going to be nu times 2v over c cosine of theta, where theta is this angle, the angle right here. And you convert this into lambda and you get delta lambda is equal to 
2v over c lambda cosine of theta per reflection. So, each reflection gives you this. I will leave the, this for you. So, obtain this. Now, in moving by delta r, let us see how many reflections does this wave undergo or does this ray undergo? So how many reflections? When radius changes by delta r. Now, you see time taken by the ray before it gets reflected again. That is time interval between two reflections is going to be the length of that chord that is 2 r cosine theta divided by c. each reflection takes this much time. So, and time in moving by delta r is equal to delta r by v. So, this means by the time the boundary has moved by delta r, number of reflections is going to be delta r by v times c over 2 r cosine of theta. And I have already calculated what is delta lambda per reflection. So, total delta lambda in change of r by delta r is going to be delta lambda per reflection is 2 v lambda over c cosine of theta times c delta r over 2 r cosine theta times v. This is delta lambda. Again, we can cancel terms, this V cancels, 2 cancels, C cancels, cosine theta cancels, and you get this equal to lambda delta R by R. So, you get delta lambda over lambda equals delta R over R. Take delta lambda and delta r going to 0, you get d lambda over lambda is equal to dr over r and therefore, lambda over r is equal to constant or lambda is proportional to r. Now, let us combine all the results. You have t proportional to 1 over r and lambda proportional to r and this means the temperature of the cavity is proportional to 1 over lambda or lambda t equals constant. Let us understand the meaning of this. 
So suppose I started at a certain temperature in a cavity, then lambda versus u, lambda t, suppose like this. So let's take a few points, one point here, one point here, one point at the maximum, one point here, and one point here. Point one, point two, point three, let's call it maximum, point four, point five. This is at some radius. And as the cavity expands, so its temperature changes, temperature comes down, lambda t is going to be constant. So if temperature goes down, the curves are going to shift and this will expand a bit. So point one, which was here, now goes here. Point two, which was here, now goes here. Maximum also shifts. This is maximum, two, one, four shifts, and so does five. So they all go to larger lambda. This is what it means. And for each point, the constant is going to be different. For each point, the constant is different. So for best, most convenient time is the maximum point. Most convenient point is the maximum point. So you say lambda max t equals constant. And that has some value. So that's Wien's displacement law. Purely on the basis of how things change, how the temperature changes, and how the wavelength of, the, uh, of a particular color changes as one let the cavity expand adiabatically. Uh, I'm also plotting, this is also u lambda t. t is different, so let's call it t bar. So the curve expands. If instead you were compressing the cavity, the curve would squeeze. Now for the distribution versus lambda. So what we have seen is that at a particular u lambda t1 versus lambda, if this curve was like this, at a different temperature, lambda u lambda t2, it changes shape. And if I take a particular energy section, let's say here, at lambda 1, and of the width d lambda 1, it will go to some lambda 2 of the width d lambda 2. And the way they are going to be related is lambda 1 t1 is going to be equal to lambda 2 t2. And d lambda 1 t1 is going to be d lambda 2 t2. This is how, as you go from one temperature to the other, this is how the curve is going to shift. And by Boltzmann's analysis, earlier we have done it for u. I can also do it for u lambda. I'm going to have u lambda 1 t1 d lambda 1, that's the total energy content, divided by u lambda 2 t2 d lambda 2 equals 
T 1 raised to 4 divided by T 2 raised to 4. Because u lambda d lambda, well, the energy content is proportional to T raised to 4. Notice I am talking about energy content in a range of lambda to d la lambda plus d lambda, not the spectral density itself, it is the total energy. Now, we have already seen that d lambda 1 over d lambda 2 is equal to t 2 over t 1. So, I get u lambda 1 t 1 divided by u lambda 2 t 2 is equal to t 1 raised to 5 divided by t 2 raised to 5. And since lambda t is a constant, I can write this because I am considering those points that are shifting from one to the other, I can write this as lambda 2 raised to 5 over lambda 1 raised to 5. So, I have u lambda 1 t 1 over t 1 raised to 5 equals u lambda 2 t 2 over t 2 raised to 5 or u lambda 1 t 1 divided by not divided by multiplied by lambda 1 raised to 5 is equal to u lambda 2 t 2 lambda 2 raised to 5. They are all related. When I am going from one particular part of the curve to the other part which is related by lambda t equals constant. So, what do we have? We have a curve u lambda t 1 versus lambda. Suppose this curve is given and I go to t 2. and I want to plot it with respect to lambda, then I know precisely how to shift which lambda where. So, each lambda for example, this lambda here will shift, let us say assume T 2 is less than T 1, it will shift further out. Let me make it with red, it will shift somewhere here, maximum will shift somewhere here. So, the curve will look like this and the height will be such that u lambda 1 times lambda 1 raised to 5 is equal to u lambda 2 times lambda 2 raised to 5. So, it will come down. So, given one curve, I can plot curves at all temperatures. So, given curve at one temperature, we can scale this to other temperatures. This is beautiful universal result. Now that I know that u lambda t lambda raised to 5 is a constant and this constant in general would depend on lambda t. Since as I change lambda and t, lambda t is a constant, it is a function of lambda and t. I had asked you earlier to go from u lambda d lambda to u nu d nu. This also means that u nu t over nu cube is equal to some f nu over t. show this. So, we have found a general form that lambda t remains a constant for a 
u lambda t versus lambda curve. And also, as you shift from those point to the other, lambda raised to 5 u lambda t is a function of lambda t. Or equivalently, nu cube u nu t, a nu cube inverse is equal to some f nu over t or u nu t is of the form nu cube times a function nu over t. So, such a powerful result and you cannot deviate from this. This necessarily is the form of black body spectral density curve. And what we did then is that since the molecules have a distribution depending on one half m v square over k t, assumed arbitrarily, but assumed that frequency emitted by molecules is proportional to their energy and therefore propose the curve that u nu t is going to be of the form some constant a nu cube e raised to minus b nu over t. This is Wien's distribution formula. This formula is approximate, but whatever we did before that, that's exact. Because this is giving you general forms based on thermodynamics, so you cannot deviate from that. Now, the exact formula was given by Planck and that is 8 pi over c cubed h nu cube over e raised to h nu over k t minus 1. Notice that this comes conforms to the form given by V n in that it is a function of nu cube times a function of nu by t. So, we came very close to the exact formula. So, what we have argued is that the lambda t is a constant. If you look at, if we look at u lambda t curves, which are known as the spectral density curves at different temperatures and mark the specific points. You see those specific points go to a specific point. So, usually the point that is marked is the point that is marked is where the spectral density is maximum. And for that you can calculate that constant and you get lambda max t equals constant. Part 2, we have also learnt that u nu t has to be of the form some 
nu cubed a function of nu over t or u lambda t has to be of the form from g lambda t over lambda raised to 5. And an approximation to this is developed by Vn. So, Vn's formula is u nu t equals a nu cube e raised to minus b nu by t. And a and b can be found from the Stevan Boltzmann constant and lambda max equals t. An exact formula by Planck is u nu t equals 8 pi over c cubed h nu cube over e raised to h nu over k t minus 1 uh, for nu over t large this is Vien's formula and for nu over t small this goes to 8 pi over c cubed h nu square h cancels k b t which is Raleigh's formula. So, you see in the limit of q by t small, Vien's formula deviates from the exact formula, but over large range it matches. So, that is the power of thermodynamics. Purely on the basis of thermodynamic arguments, Vien could guess, could get his uh, displacement formula and could guess the form that the final formula, exact formula has to take. He was awarded the Nobel Prize for this and that Nobel citation did say that Wien has solved more than half the problem. So, that is the, the one topic I wanted to cover. This, cover this, this topic is very dear to me because it shows you that without knowing the microscopic details how close one can come to guessing what the right answer should be. So, with this I conclude this lecture. Vien's analysis of black body spectrum using Thermodynamics has been discussed in detail. Thank you.